Hey everybody, this is uh, yet, an, yet another video that I'm making for a sewing machine that has gone through my restoration process. And uh, if, if you've never seen any of my videos or seen any of my posts, uh, one of my hobbies is restoring vintage sewing machines from what I call the vintage era. And that is, depending on the brand, uh, up until the late 60s, early 70s. And it really depends on which brand because different uh, manufacturers started to, they started to change their quality at different points in history. But uh, this machine that you are seeing is, uh, uh, it actually has all the capability most of you who sew will ever need. It is a machine that does both straight lock stitch, which is your most common stitch, and it also has zigzag. And, you know, it has two sections, basically the, the, um, the straight stitching control and the zigzag control, as well as a bobbin winder. And for many of you, that's all you need. And if it is, this machine is remarkably mint. And I've seen a lot of sewing machine over the year, machines over the years I've been doing this. And here lately, I've just got lucky. I've had a run where machines are aesthetically clean and at a level that's hard to believe. They almost look like they were purchased, put away, and never used. And I can pretty much tell when I get into the inside of the machine. And you're going to see the, the uh, images that I will post on Craigslist for this machine when I get, when I get its listing on there. You'll see um, a lot of the images of the work I do. And I, every machine, whether it looks gorgeous on the outside, like this one does, or some of those that have a little bit more wear on the outside, uh, they're all capable of sewing beautifully. But I never assume that the machine is ready to sew. And you shouldn't either when you're buying something. If you, you know, I, I found this in a... Um, Actually, I purchased this online, but normally I, uh, if I find them in a thrift store, they may look gorgeous and they may look rough, but you can't make assumptions about what kind of condition they're in. And I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the things, <clears throat> when I went to test this machine, it didn't really, you know, it would sew for a while and stop. Well, the machine is not broken and it's in gorgeous shape, but this, and those of you who have a class 15 or 15 uh, uh, bobbin type machine will know this. This is the bobbin case, right? And the bobbin case is not worn out, but I suspect at some point in its history, someone who sewed with it uh, didn't understand, or anyway, the, the little spring latch broke. So they assumed the machine wouldn't work and they just got rid of it. And that's a shame because the machine is just getting broke in because it was never used that much. But again, the bobbin case is something that is easily replaceable. Um, you can get replacements. I already had one. I keep, you know, I keep an inventory of certain parts. And I replaced the bobbin case, and she's ready to go. I mean, it was just that simple. Uh, now, the restoration of the machine involved going through all of the uh, machine's systems, okay, inside and out. And you'll see that listed. So anyway, the point I wanted to make is when you see a machine that looks this clean, the, the paint is gorgeous. Uh, I really don't think it was used that much by whoever whoever purchased it, but don't assume it doesn't need a full servicing because this is 1968, okay? It's been around a long time, and it needed going through. It needed cleaning. The metal moving parts needed cleaning, and then, uh, uh, and then it needed new lubrication, obviously, along with the bobbin case and, of course, doing some testing here. So, uh, you know, I always invest hours in these machines no matter how, no matter how pretty they may look. So, uh, without further rambling here. Without further rambling here, I'm going to do some test stitching for you guys. This is a low shank machine, which is unusual. A lot of the Kenmore's are high shank. It doesn't really matter. You can find attachments for both. This machine comes with a zigzag foot, which is probably what you're going to use 90% of the time. If you want to get more feet for this, they are easily found, and you can buy them new in a sewing shop, uh, and they're universal. It doesn't have to, you know, it's not a Kenmore Sears thing. You don't have to go to Sears for these. Um, and you can also find the vintage versions on uh, places like eBay. They're really easy to find. So uh, I'm going to start for you guys with a zigzag. I've been doing some test stitching here. And uh, she sews beautifully. But I want to go ahead and um, actually I'll, let me start with some straight first. And then we'll so I'm gonna just come over. I've got straight. I had zigzag before. And I'm going to do some uh, a long length straight stitch. I'm going just at a slow pace right now. And of course, back tacking is a given. So if, you're, if you've never had a vintage machine before, don't worry, you can back tack, I promise. Very easy to do. Go a little faster. It'll go faster still, but um, uh, let's see. So I've got my straight stitching here. And then I'm going to come over and I'll shorten it. I've already done this before, again, in my test, but 
I want you guys to see it being demonstrated. So I'm going to shorten that stitch and we'll come over and get a, a much finer straight stitch. And this machine runs relatively quietly. Those of you who've seen my other videos know that the Necky company originally invented with their Italian machines zigzag. Eventually the cost of production left Europe and the United States and it went to Japan. So this is a made in Japan machine. And it was made by one of, uh, there were several companies that made machines for Sears. And um, one of those was Toyota. In fact, it's kind of funny. This machine is a very similar color to one of the early Toyota Corollas. Uh, I remember seeing, a, seeing one that had been restored. Uh, but this machine is wonderfully made. It has Japanese quality and uh, it's pretty quiet because it's an oscillating type shuttle hook. Um, because it is a vertical shuttle or vertical bobbin machine, it is, lends itself beautifully to free motion work, any of you who like to do that if you're quilters. And of course, dropping your feed dogs is very easy. There's a switch here, they go up and down. Um, for those of you looking at vintage machines, you always want to check that because a lot of machines, the uh, bobbin lowering mechanism never got used, ever. And they're often stuck, but I always go through and I, I recondition every one to make sure they function properly. So I am going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to move over here and do another row of zigzag. I'm going to show you guys all of these in, in just a second. And I'll do sort of a medium long zigzag here. Whoops, should bring my needle up so I don't move my fabric. I'll come over and I'll do it really wide so you guys can see. And zigzag is you know pretty standard in any sewing, new sewing machine today. But uh, starting with Necky in the 50s, it was, a, it was a great innovation. And of course, remember home sergers really did not exist then or they were just starting to be thought about. Okay, this is, I have four layers of a muslin fabric. I'm going to show you guys stitch quality. Now, see how we're doing in this light. I'm in the sunroom as I, as I normally am when I do my stitches. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, I think those are reading. And you'll see both straight and zigzag. Uh, you see the short zigzag here, and you'll see those beautiful uh, fine stitches. Now I normally go on and on about um, about rotary hooks, but that's that's not too shabby when it comes to an oscillating hook machine for straight stitching. Yeah, and I'm hoping these will focus because these are very very short short stitches. And let me turn on the other side, and you'll see I have sort of a I have an Italian quality thread. I always use high quality thread. This one's made in Italy and it's the pink. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can get a little bit more light here for you folks. Oops, too much. There we go. Yeah, now you can see, I just wanted you to see the fine detail and these really beautiful stitches that this machine makes. I'm going to go with a darker fabric now. This is another, yet another remnant of these drapery that I have. This is a heavier weight fabric and it has, there are two layers here, but then there's a hem down here. So I've really got four layers of this um, drapery fabric. So uh, I've got a size 14 needle in here. So we'll go ahead and let the machine chew on this for a bit. This is a pretty substantial weight. This is similar to what you would do, again, if you're doing drapery, or maybe you were doing um, like a slip cover or some kind of, you know, upholstery weight fabric. And I'm going back to straight stitch again. And even with this weight of fabric, you'll notice that the machine doesn't miss a beat. Very strong motor, very quiet, even at this um, weight, which is really, really wonderful. Um, let's come over here. And I'll come back. I won't go as fast on this because again, needles, even good needles like my Oregon brand needle here can only go so fast through fabric. Then I'll come back over and we'll do some zigzag on this as well. And let's see, I think I'll do a medium. Pull my needle up. Do maybe a medium width zigzag this time. And, of course, back tacking with zigzag is just as easy. <clears throat> Let's see. Come over. I think I'll make my zigzag wider this time. It's literally that easy, changing it. Yeah, 
and you guys can see really beautiful and consistent stitches. Again, that's four layers of a medium weight cotton that was used in a, in a uh, piece of drapery. And then finally, I often use cargo pants or denim to show what I think should be a really good test of a machine. This is high quality Levi's denim. It's an old part of an old pair of blue jeans. And I'm gonna uh, take the machine through this because I want you to see, uh, and this is particularly, you'll see this more in straight stitch than anything come back over to straight. And you want to always check a machine and see how she sews when the density of the fabric changes. And that's really important because you don't want to lose tension and you don't want your, your stitches to get crooked. So I'll come back once more. And this machine just went over two layers of denim and then of course it's got the seam, those, those really dense uh, denim seams on, uh, you know, there's a seam on both sides and it goes through it, doesn't miss a beat. And if you look closely, you'll see, I think I have sort of a light colored neutral thread here. Hoping this will show up. But yeah, you can see where both of my uh, stitch rows go across. They're, they remain straight, they don't lose tension. And let's see if the, this over here, here on the pink side, and you'll see that. One of the hallmarks of a really good sewing machine is one that can do this. And really, you know, a lot of the new sewing machines won't do it or won't do it well. And it's kind of a shame. But anyway, uh, one of the things I want you guys to sort of take away from this is that when you see a vintage sewing machine and it's on sale somewhere, you really are uh, wanting to take a look at it and know that it needs to be gone through. <coughs> You may see a machine that's dirty, covered in dust, it's covered with scratches, or you may see one that really looks, I mean, mint is not an exaggeration. This machine was in a case, somebody kept it in what I call uh, air-conditioned comfort all its life, and yet it still needs to be fully gone through. And when I say uh, I do a full overhaul or a restoration, which you see me mention in the post, I really mean that every part of the sewing machine, uh, all of the switch gear, the bobbin winder is tested to make sure that it works properly. All of the shuttle and the um, bobbin case area below uh, is taken care of. Feed dogs are obviously clean. All of, the sw all of the drivetrain gear underneath has to be cleaned and lubricated. Above, the same thing happens. And then over here, you have this compartment on the side. You've got your tension adjuster, and then you've got the motor. And the motor is a whole other section that I, that I take care of. And that's important because these machines, you know, this machine's 45 years old, and it's probably never had a service. Um, and it needs it. But once that's done, if you will uh, keep your feed dogs clean of lint and then you oil it with each project, that's all you should have to do. And this machine, like I say, this machine is, um, is one that really has, I call it a low mileage machine. So if, uh, if you're looking for a strong, reliable machine, one that you don't want to have to fuss over, um, and you want to do lots of home sewing projects, uh, like I say, be, feel free to email me uh, through the listing and I will set up a time for you to come and see it and you can do some test sewing on it and you can test any other machines that uh, any of the other machines I might have uh, posted. I appreciate you watching. Thanks.